trees are the longest lived organisms. There are bristlecone pines that are about 5,000 years old, and it is estimated that a Norway spruce in Sweden and some quaking aspen groves in the Rocky Mountains are up to 10,000 years old. The latter species have renewed themselves through layering or root suckers, but the genetic individual is the same over time. The biggest trembling aspen grove in Iceland is in Stöðafjörður in East Iceland and covers about 40 hectares of land, all one clone. This aspen is slow growing and has a creeping growth habit. Presumably, it has taken thousands of years to achieve this spread, as it multiplies only by root suckers. It is possible that a seed was blown there from Europe when a tongue of the Ice Age glacier was retreating from the fjord about 10,000 years ago. The land would have had sparse vegetation and the seed was able to find a place to germinate. The Ice Age aspen has tolerated the Icelandic climate through the millennia, despite some fluctuations. Its only competition was birch and willow scrub, which in the eastern fjords is also low growing. Aspen resembling it is no longer to be found in its area of origin south of the glacial extent in Europe. There, the Ice Age vegetation was replaced by forests of tall trees that only tall aspens could compete with. Forests are quite resilient in the face of climate change. They tolerate well the fluctuations that are common between years of two to three degrees in average temperature and a few dozen millimeters in precipitation. This is not least because most forests consist of several tree species. Even though one tree species might struggle to survive or even become extinct, the forest remains. Less diverse forests, such as the native Icelandic birchwoods, are potentially at higher risk from climate change. As climate change becomes ever greater, Individual tree species and even whole forests can start to suffer. Often, greater stress results in increased sensitivity to insect pests and fungal pathogens. When this is coupled with increases in insect outbreaks because of the warmer weather or improved conditions for fungi due to increased precipitation, forest damage can become severe. Increased frequency or strength of high winds can also cause increased damage to trees and forests. The science behind the greenhouse effect of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is tried and true, and measurements showing ever-increasing concentration of carbon dioxide and higher global temperatures are correct. Natural fluctuations in climate can offset or mask warming temporarily but the underlying and persistent increase in emissions continues, and the effects will be complex, not only an increased average temperature. Predicted changes must be taken into account in forestry as much as possible. For instance, with respect to cultivation methods and the use of tree species and provenances. But the first challenge for trees is to survive as seedlings. It is always the case that a tree needs to be adapted to prevailing conditions at the time of seedling establishment. Nevertheless, it is possible to prepare for the climate change that will take place. The first step is to build up a good knowledge base about adaptation and the likely reaction of the main tree species to climate change. Significant knowledge is available on several tree species used in Icelandic forestry. We know their various strengths and weaknesses and can predict their likely responses to climate change to some extent. But there is continuing need to maintain, strengthen and update that knowledge, which means that we need people educated in forest genetics and other areas of expertise, and we will need to be able to offer these people jobs. Secondly, there is a need to ensure the supply of appropriate reproductive material that is, seed and cuttings of good genetic quality. This is best done through active tree breeding, but also through contacts with other countries. Cooperation is active among the Nordic countries in this field, and connections have been made to other European countries and Canada and the United States. 
Careful monitoring of tree growth and vigor within older genetic trials must be done regularly and new trials established as the need arises. Thirdly, it is necessary that forest owners be open to diverse possibilities in forestry. There is, for example, no reason that all forestry should be based on producing saw timber on 80 to 100 year rotations. Poplar for biomass production can be grown in 25 to 30 years on fertile land and larch and pine in 40 years on less fertile sites. Basing forestry partly on shorter rotations reduces risk and facilitates switching to better adapted material as needed. It is also important to consider the diversity of species selection. This often happens automatically when species are selected with respect to site quality. It is possible to grow a mix of poplar and spruce stands on fertile land, pine on less fertile sites and larch on the most infertile spots. The landscape then supports a mixed forest. Consideration should also be given to afforestation at higher altitudes than has been customary. Birch is often attacked by insects and Siberian larch prefers a relatively stable cold winter. As warming increases, lowland areas will eventually become less suitable for these species. This does not mean that these species will not continue to have a role in Icelandic forestry, because there is every reason to increase forestry at higher elevations. There, the birch could find peace from insect pests and larch sufficiently cold winters. Mostly though, there is a great deal of land at 300 to 500 meter elevation that would benefit from afforestation. Ideally, productive species should be emphasized in forestry in the lowlands, black cottonwood, sitka spruce, lodgepole pine, and hybrid larch. On the International Day of Forests, March 21st, it is our hope at the Icelandic Forest Service that you will appreciate what forests give us in the form of spiritual and material benefits. In a time of rapid change, it is not a given that they will always be able to meet our demands. It is necessary towards the protection and sustainable management of forests so that they may forever be to our benefit and enjoyment. Thank you.